I, I was told by the, by the system, um, having been through the NHS and a couple of charities, um, that that was it, that I would be suffering this for the rest of my life. And I wouldn't accept that. The real temper swings started happening. The nightmares really began to be apparent. Uh, interesting occasions when I'd wake up and he'd be attacking me. He'd be fast asleep, but he'd be having a nightmare and I would be there. We've, we've got together um, to take well a whole load of guys down to down to France and um, eradicate and their symptoms of and girls and eradicate their symptoms of PTSD. But uh, you know. Great time, big recession, I know, let's give up a job, let's live off one salary and start a charity. <laughs> so uh, it's, it's been an exciting couple of months, but we're getting there, you know, we're getting there. Yeah. You, know. um, you don't really want to say anything, like, because you're the one, like, after the boys, like, and then if I go downhill, what are they going to do, like, and it's just male pride, like. I think there's nothing wrong with you, but there is. A boy who had uh, driven the tank and he'd misjudged the, the bridge. And he went over into the canal and the turret turned around and trapped him and he's screaming inside and Jamie was diving in, uh, trying to save him again and again. <coughs> Sorry. But he couldn't. Well, basically, if, if I hadn't spoken to Rob, I would have ended up in a really bad place, or probably ended up taking my life, like, because of lack of people understanding what you've been through, and the lack of people actually wanting to help you. There's no one out there that actually wants to help you, it's just an inconvenience to them, like, and when you're in the army you're just a number. If you've got problems, they just push you away, and it's either this or nothing. I made a makeshift mortuary, you know, I put him up against an air conditioning unit in a bag and then I encased him in mattresses just so he wouldn't be stinking the place out and that's what I had to do, that's just one night out of 18 years I just feel, I feel like throwing them in the bin because they mean nothing to me, just bits of metal because no one actually cares about us. But when it comes home and you see your son like that, you know, sort of coming in the door and literally hitting both sides of the wall, and it's, you know, it can hardly stand up. But, you know, I just want him back as a son more than anything else. As I say, I've lost one, I don't want to lose another. I'm, I'm not asking for a thousand pound a week, I'm not asking for benefit, I'm not asking for nothing, I'm asking for a little bit of help, which no one apparently on the NHS can give me. I was um, yeah, discharged, medically discharged from the, from the Marines a, a year ago, and uh, I've been through a sort of dark night of this whole process where um, things kind of spiraled very negatively for me since I left, and. Um, I guess the help I required at the time wasn't really kind of forthcoming through the various NHS systems. Time out on the ground in Hellman, you're expecting to get you know, shot at or, or blown up, and but you're kind of trained to to sort of cope with that. You know, I had a close friend, relatively close friend, who, who was killed out there, and that had a uh, an unhealthy uh, effect on me. We're basically packing up, ready to go across to France. Uh, we're going to run the guys through a, a, a therapeutic treatment process and we've uh, developed it ourselves. We've got five guys here that we're taking over, shed their symptoms of PTSD. Going so fast that we can't slow down. Moments have passed that So today we'll get the guys in, we'll give them a, a, a brief uh, of expectations and things, we'll find out where they're at, 
We'll start to break down some of those beliefs. And what I would like to do with the tools that we're going to use this morning is literally start breaking down the beliefs mm. around the problems. Yeah, and, and really getting specific around, around the areas. Mm. And you know the drills anyway, you know, you know the rest of the work. Yeah. Happy with that? Yeah. Yeah. Hey lads, when you're ready, we're going to crack on. Hey guys, welcome. It's been quite a long, long haul already, hasn't it? Because I'll bet there's some people in the room thinking, what the hell's going to happen next? You know, so where do you think it's going? Okay, so we're never going to use the word wrong. We're going to stop using that word, because that's a word that has sort of all sorts of connotations. What, would, what do you think will happen when you change you? I'd like to go back to a place where people can see me for who I really am. Do you, not, know, do you not, know who you are? Not for what I was. Do you know who you are? So how can other people know who you are if you don't know who you are? And do you think recognising your behaviours is going to help you move on? So how would you recognise your behaviours? It's as if you can see what's inside yourself. So, what are we going to use this for in the future, do you think? As a goal. Yeah. And basically now we've got to a stage where we've taken the nuts and bolts out of neurolinguistics, hypnosis and timeline therapy and created something that actually works with PTSD. Was a chirpy kind of character anyway, and to come out of the run again this morning, Mo was sort of enthused to, to even be running, uh, considering where he's come from. I think what this has done, certainly today, is it's got him to see his position from maybe his dad's perspective, and that was really, really tough for Mo today. You know, there's no one particular highlight of the week. Just seeing all three of the guys change this week has been a highlight. It's been fa fantastic to see the faces from where they first were when I first met them. Your warriors returning from a battle, a battle at many levels, in many places, with many people. You're being healed, you're being transformed. You are returning home. They had caught me sooner, and this had been up and running for a couple of years, or a year before. I'd just probably still be serving now. And what I've experienced here so far is just blow me out of the water, so to speak. And I'm, I'm just amazed at the potential of, of what I've experienced here. It's just amazing, and I know so many other people will benefit from this. That's the way it works, and Rob got in touch straight away. I, I owe my life to Rob. Eventually